Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. In this video, we're gonna talk about contrast enhance and array of the carotis, the neck. I'm gonna do two things. Firstly, I'm gonna show you how you can do it easily. Secondly, we're gonna do the post processing on the XA platform. Stick around and I will show you. Hey, for those who are new, my name is Mark again. I'm an MRI radiographer. So in my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. So there have been many requests since I started the YouTube channel and people are asking about how you can do with the contrast enhance MRA of the neck as the easiest approach. So I uh, did try a few approaches and I have one for you here, which is very easy. And uh, we could do the post processing as well. So enough talking from me. Let's go to the scan and I will show you. All right, like I mentioned, we are at Axe platform and I already did the exam. So I'm going to show you how I did it precisely. You can see here, this is the sequences I did and included, of course, a localizer, which is not shown here. But this vessel neck localizer here is, is very important because with this one, you can see where the vessels are. You don't need to, to cover a lot by that. Less in the scan time, less in the scan time per sequence means you don't get venous contaminations, right? Let me show you where you can find this uh, sequence right there. In the Siemens tree, you just go to the head and lower down here, you can see there is contrast enhance with the twist, but I didn't do a twist right here today. So I want to show you what I did and where you can find the sequences, but let's go for the scout first. Secondly, you go to angiography, you will see the vessel scout with this one. You can just use that one. So if you use that one, you try to cover it in the sagittal plane and uh, you will see the carotis very easily. So it's easy to do the angulation as well, right? So this is the first sequence I did, which is a non-contrast and native images. So you know exactly where you can position that. There's a lot of shortcuts here, right here in the post-processing. So I will show you a few here. Firstly, you can scroll through the images, just look there and you can see the scan time here is around uh, 13 seconds or so. I want it to be as low as possible so due to the Venus contaminations. And for the angiography sequence, I go to uh, liver or abdomen. You can find it elsewhere as well. And I guess there are many ways to do this, but I will show you what I did and how I used to do it. Here in the lower, you can go to angiography, the contrast enhance. You have care bullets, test bullets, and twists. So what I did was a care bullets approach. So let's go to care bullets. See here, you have all the sequences. You have the native, you have the care bonus, and then you have the possible past sequence scandalinio. So let's open one here. I just want to show you one thing. Inside the sequence, there are different uh, ways you can fill the case space, right? So here you can see it's a uh, user defined time to center three seconds. What I did, I put the time to center at one second. The reason for that is that because when I see the contrast arrive at the area of interest, I want the, the uptake right there. So fill the case space right there. So I don't want to add any seconds. So for the limb imaging or for the breath holes, you need to think about that. But for carotis, it's a free breathing. Patient just lying there, breathing gentle. And then when the contrast arrive, you just run the sequence. The next thing I did was Cabulus is just one slice, a thick slice. So I position it coronal at the carotid. And uh, to be honest, actually this exam was done with the, not the power injector, but the hand injector. But I really recommend to do it with the power inject because it's more consistent from patient to patient. And then you get the flow rate correctly each time. But this was done with the hand injector. Let's zoom in a little bit. So what I did is just, I just run the cabulus and just to see that the sequence is okay. I got the coverage of the carotid. There's no fold over and that, uh, when I'm happy with that, I just give contrast. And whenever I'm giving contrast, I'm looking right here. There you go. So in this patient, it's around 18.4 seconds before I can see the contrast around the carotid. When I see that, I just stop the cabulus and then start the first sequence, arterial, which is ready. But not only that, I have two consecutive sequences right after each other because it's no breath hole, so you can continuously run two sequences just to catch the arterial and the venous because the venous contamination is, it goes back to very fast. You can see already here that the venous filling is coming fast, so it's important that you catch the arterial phase. All right, so what we do in the post-processing, we need to subtract, right? You take the first arterial, subtract towards um, the native, 
so you will sit along only with the contrast. You can see the Venus here is filling very fast. There's a few shortcuts here. So in the corner, we have four corners. There are different purposes of those corners. And then now on the upper right hand corner here, you have the 3D reference point. If you put the R on the, on the keyboard and then all the images are somehow synced together, you can sh just scroll through. And then you have the rotate, the windowing, the W, and then you have the zoom, it's a C. So it's important to just have in hand uh, those shortcuts because it's much faster compared to go to every corner and yeah. So what I want to do now is I want to subtract. So I just right click on my mouse and you can see the subtraction button right there. But that is a shortcut as well. So how can you add that to the shortcut? So let me show you. In the lower right corner, you can see analysis tool and then you have subtraction. If you go to subtraction, you have a wheel right there. Go there. Right click. And then you see send to context menu. That's where the shortcut is. Everything you find, if you set it to context menu, menu you right click and then it will be there. So I just right click and I can see that it's already there. It's just a fast way to do the subtraction. So you can either choose to subtract uh, arterial and then go out and then go in again, do a Venus by two times. So you can do it all in once. Let me show you. Cancel that one. So I just mark one image, just choose whatever you want. And then on the uh, right click and that's subtraction. So it's very empty now because that's just mark uh, one native. This is native one. So let me show you. And now you can drag and drop. I drag the arterial face. I remove that native, I drag the Venus face, and then I drag the, uh, uh, the pre-face of native down there. So that means that these two will be subtracted towards this one. So if you push OK, it will be two separately. Venus, arterial, and just one click and that's it. You don't have to go in and out. Yeah, you can see now. There you go. So I have arterial and Venus finished. One click, that's it. So let's continue with the post processing. This is a part of part processing because whenever you're doing uh, a geography, you want to, of course, subtract because then you will uh, have the vessel enhanced very well. So I just double click, I just want to have a big one. You can see here, if you put, uh, sorry, you can see here, this is the original mode. So if you push the number or the keyboard number one, that's the original one. So that's a shortcut as well. You see number two is MPR, number three is MPR thick, number four is MIP, and number five is MIP thin. You can see there. And number six is mini MIP. And then number seven is, is uh, VRT. There you go. Number seven is VRT. So I just want to use the MIP, do the post processing. So I mark the sequence, of course, and then I go to the upper left corner. In that left corner, I have something called uh, Rangers, or you also have Power Rangers down here, which is also a shortcut. I just go in there, Parallel Rangers. So in here, you have uh, multiple uh, options. Whatever you can do here, you can do MPR or whatever you want. You can do MIP 10, and uh, what we want to do is the radio. So we'll go into the radio right there. You can see MPR if you want to do that, or radials. So we want to be at the radios, but we want to spin it all around and look it through the images. So the thing is that the green one you see right there, that's the field of view. That's the final image you want to have. You can zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want. So we did a few um, uh, presets right there. If you're happy with the preset, just push the create preset and then you will create your own one and you can rename it whatever you want. So I'm just going to zoom in here. You can see the green uh, box right there. And then you can spin it all around. If you, uh, yeah, you can zoom everyone in just to have a better look. So if you zoom in like that on every corner of the green one, you can see you get zoom in on your final image. Or you can just use your... Uh, your mouse to, to zoom in and out. It's much easier, it's fast. I don't like to use the every corner of the green box. It just takes time. What I do is just use the mouse. So if you want to do a corroded, only one corroded, and you want to cut everything uh, on the left side, you only want the right one. 
you cannot zoom it like this because if you zoom like this, the final image towards you like this is looks good. But whatever you spin around, it will not be cut. You see it overlap. So if you want to do that, this is very different from what we use to an e software. I just go out there again. So you need to go up the right corner right there. And then you use something which is called clip box. So whenever you're using clip box, you can see there's now a, a white box. That's the way you clip it. So I use every corner right here and then I just zoom it. And not zoom in, I clip it uh, somehow. Just got to catch that corner right there. And now you can see my final image is down there. And when I spin around, you can see the, the other left side is cut. So it, that's how you can do it if you want to have only one side or you want to crop things. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Sometimes you want to use the punch. The punch function is that you cut it out. You can remove it inside whatever you cut or remove outside. So let me show you. You can see here, remove inside, remove outside. So you just hold your mouse and draw whatever you want to cut. And then whenever you're happy, you want to stop there, you just double click and then it will move like that. Or remove outside, remove inside, whatever you want. Double click and then, yeah, so. Okay, the last thing I want to show is that favorite tools. The favorite tools, I think you have to need a password to get in there. And uh, nonetheless, local Siemens can help you with that one. It's very useful because here you have the power rangers, the 3D, the ADC, all the things you don't need to go to every corner just to find the things. So whatever you use the most, arrow, distance, yeah. Uh, subtraction is also here. It's very helpful. So you can see I can push the plus button, but I can somehow not drag and drop. Uh, it should be easy as that. If you, I think you need to have a password. Uh, if so, just ask your local Siemens and they will help you with that one. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. Nonetheless, uh, contrast enhanced MRA can be very difficult, but if you know how to use it, it's simple as that. Just like what I show you now. Just that whenever you do the keyboard, stay calm, watch the contrast arrive at your area of interest, and then just go scout. For the neck imaging, with no breath fold, it's much easier compared to the thorax and abdomen where you need to include the breath fold, so that's very, a little bit differently. But the same approach, but you have to take account to the, the seconds of the breath fold as well. Before we close up, I do have a question for you. How do you usually perform contrast enhanced MRA? Do you use Campbell's or Tespolis approach? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to uh, push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and whenever new videos will be coming up, you will get a ding ding. So until next time, take care and I'll catch up with you in my next video. Peace out.